Have you tried training methods that just didn't work? Do you feel that your pet is not getting his or her nutritional needs met? Are illnesses and bad behavior your daily norm? You're going to want to join me on the Pet Parenting Reset, where you'll hear interesting and informative interviews and get solutions to all your pet problems. I'm your host, Jessica L. Fisher. Well, hello, Merry Christmas, Happy Holidays, whatever holiday you observe, I hope you are taking some time to rest and relax, enjoy time with friends and family and your pets. So this podcast episode is going to be pretty darn quick. I'm going to take a little bit of time to myself off of social media around Christmas. I'm just going to spend a little bit of time with my pets. That's my goal. And our new house, you know, just enjoy our new house that we moved this year from California to Texas and could not be happier. Our home is beautiful. So I wanted to just provide a couple of quick tips for keeping your pets safe this holiday season. Now, you, if you, whatever you celebrate, you've probably already decorated. So one tip is to make sure that your pet's don't play with or ingest any of the decorations. Uh, I have not used tinsel on my Christmas tree for many, 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 many years. I think my dad did when I was really little, but outside of that, I I have never used it on my own. It's really dangerous for our cats especially, but even for our dogs who like to play with and eat things, they shouldn't. Uh, So that is one thing that stands out in particular. I don't use glass ornaments as well, or or, or if I do, I put them closer to the top of the tree. Uh, I have been quite lucky that my dog doesn't mess with the tree at all. Uh, Cats generally like to mess with the tree, (laughs) no matter what you do. And that's, that's okay. But don't use glass ornaments, something that breaks easily, because if they play with it during the middle of the night and it breaks and all over the floor and they can step in it and cut their paws, you don't want that to happen. So that's another thing. If you are decorating for any other holiday, then same things apply. Make sure to keep decorations away out of reach of our pets because they can be, you know, they're new and interesting and we want to make sure that they don't knock them off of a table or a dresser or anything like that. Uh, So keeping our pets safe is something that should be on the forefront uh, of our minds during the holiday season. Also, um, you know, I I posted a a little, oh, what do you call it? Like a little image at Thanksgiving time that told you, you know, there are some things that that you cook around the holidays that is totally okay for our pets to eat, but there's a lot that is not. So sharing in holiday festivities with our pets, I think is wonderful, but we do need to do that responsibly. So white and dark meat turkey is totally fine. I would stay away from ham. It's just generally, especially the way we cook it, it's just too salty. And uh, we definitely never, ever, ever want to give our dogs or cats cooked bones. Um, So stay away from the skin and the drippings as well. That can just be too fatty. We never want to feed our pets onions, period, end of story. Cats cannot have garlic as well. Um, so if you are any, any casseroles, anything that there's a lot of ingredients in, I would just stay away from it. That's going to include stuffing, which generally has onions in it. Um, so yeah, just be very cautious. You can share whole fresh foods, um, whether they're raw or lightly steamed, maybe some broccoli, carrots, Brussels sprouts, asparagus, things like that are going to be wonderful. You can share with them Generally, I doubt your cat's going to eat it. There are some cats out there, though, that would. So, you know, raw or lightly steamed, you can definitely share that with your cats and, of course, with your dogs. Whole cranberries, um, never never the cranberry sauce. Pumpkin is also really great. And, and, of course, everything I'm talking about is in moderation. Pumpkin is great, but not pumpkin pie mix or pumpkin pie filling. That has other stuff in it we don't want to give to our pets. So 100% pumpkin, it is. So if there is anything else on your holiday table, if you have questions, make sure to join the family on Patreon. We can have a conversation and talk about it. I am very responsive to my Patreon family. So if you comment, I am going to reply to you and I'm going to give you an in-depth 
well-researched reply. Um, it's, and if you're part of the Patreon family, there's a good chance that I know a little bit about you and your pets. So I will actually be able to provide some more specifics for you in regards to what's going on in your home with your pet specifically. Um, because we are a little family over there on Patreon. So I hope you join the family for as little as $1 a month. It does help support the content that I bring to you. And there are a couple of other things that I did want to mention for keeping your pets safe around the holidays. I'm not going to make this podcast very long at all. I want you to get back to spending time with your friends and family and your pets this holiday season. But there, there are times when maybe we invite a bunch of people over to our house and that can be scary for your pets. So preparing them ahead of time, very much like preparing for fireworks at 4th of July, right? We want to prepare ahead of time. Now, if you know maybe your dog, you have a big dog and they jump and go crazy. Yeah, ideally you would want to train with them using positive reinforcement, of course, to not jump on people or bark at the door or run up at the door when somebody comes in ahead of time. Um, If this is something you have not trained, then the best thing you can do is to put your dog uh, or cat in a safe place, maybe behind a baby gate in another room until your guests have come in the house, doors are closed, everything is safe, your dog is able to calm down a little bit. In general, most cats, now there are always exceptions. There are some very, very, very social cats, but a lot of cats just are not going to want to be around a bunch of strangers, a lot of commotion. Give them their safe space. Let them have the back bedroom maybe um, to just, that's their place. Like everybody knows we don't go in the back bedroom. The cat's back there. Um, They're just chilling out, decompressing, staying away from all of the action. If your dog or cat needs extra support, again, this is something I would prefer to talk about over on Patreon because it is going to be more customized to your pet, but there are things we can do. There are things we can do to help them calm down, um, such as chamomile, which is an essential oil blend from Animalio. If you've been following me for any length of time, you know how much I love Animalio because they are the only veterinary grade essential oils. I also happen to really love Dr. Shelton, Dr. Melissa Shelton, who is the creator of um, Animalio. She personally chooses and blends everything for and, and tests them because she is a veterinarian. She has the ability to test them on all different species of animals before ever bringing them out to market for you to use on your animals. So she knows they are completely safe. And, you know, I'd love to do an entire podcast about essential oils. I've, I've, do, I've done some YouTube videos on essential oils, so you can definitely go check those out. Uh, but the really key thing with essential oils is quality. Uh, a lot of people think that j- j- there's just a blanket statement. You can't use essential oils around your pets. And that's really unfortunate because they learn this due to the fact that people use such poor quality oils um, and poor quality oils can lead to issues. So that's why I only recommend veterinary grade essential oils, which are Animalio. And get back to my point, I kind of got off on a tangent there. Sorry about that, guys. Um, (laughs) There's a chamomile blend, which is really, really wonderful. Um, You can diffuse it. There's a a ready-to-use blend as well that you can use maybe on um, a collar or maybe you put a bandana on your dog if they tolerate that. And you can put the oil there. So there and, and honestly, if I were going to do that, I would also use the Aroma Boost, um, either the collection or the Boost in a bottle to help support my dog's overall health um, or Kitty Boost for my cat specifically, which I, I use both of these. But I would, I would, you know, layering is, is one of the best things you can do with essential oils if you're using them uh, appropriately, if you're using good quality oils, veterinary grade oils, but they are really amazing. Flower essences can also be quite useful in um, situations where your dog or cat is stressed. I use flower essences uh, for my cats when we drove three days, (laughs) Uh, three days straight when we moved this year, and they really, truly, I both diffused in the car and I used flower essences in a mist, uh, a spray bottle mist, and they truly made a huge, huge difference in the demeanor of my cats during the drive. So I know these things can work. Um, I will also mention CBD. 
I recently did a little bit of research, not a ton, on CBD and the difference in broad spectrum and full spectrum. And you do have to be really, really careful about what you buy because it's it's regulated, but it's not regulated enough, in my opinion, um, for our pets specifically. We're big, like we're big animals. Our dogs and cats are little animals. And the smaller the animal you have, the more careful you have to be. Because, and with our cats specifically, they metabolize things differently than we do. Um, they use a different metabolic system than we do as, as humans and our dogs do um, as canines. Uh, felines utilize a different metabolic pathway. So we do have to be very, very careful about the quality of what we buy. Um, so I, do, while I do think CBD can be great, I, I just want to caution you not to buy just anything you find, um, especially if it's super cheap. I would be leery of it. <laughs> and I am not saying there are, there's one brand that I know and trust. Um, but I, I you know, they're not a sponsor or anything. I, I will share that with our Patreon family. So again, if you are not part of our Patreon family, you can join for as little as a dollar. You get so much incredible information that I don't post anywhere else. You get first access to content and you can join for as little as a dollar a month and it helps support the content that I bring to you. So with that, I'm going to go ahead and end today's podcast. I hope you found it educational and informative and I hope it helps you and your pet this holiday season. Um, do have a happy holiday. Merry Christmas, whatever it is you celebrate. I hope you and your pet enjoy a little bit of time off. I hope you get a little bit of time off to spend with friends and family, um, including your pets. So give your pet, your dog and your cat some extra love from me today. And until next week, bye guys. Oh, oh.